Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com forward slash rive to receive the top 10 stocks to buy right now. We're starting to get a clearer picture of what's going on in the auto industry right now. Tesla reported earnings last week. General report... General Motors reported earnings this morning. That's the one I want to dig into today. There's a lot to cover with General Motors. Obviously, this is a company that makes primarily internal combustion engine or gasoline-powered vehicles, but it's making a big pushing into electric vehicles. It's gaining market share at a rapid rate at about 8.5% market share right now. And then the other big thing that I've covered a few times on this channel is Cruise, the company's autonomous driving unit. It owns about 80% of that company. And Cruise is getting a lot more attention, and there's some really interesting developments at that in that side of the business. So I want to cover that as well. My name is Travis Hoyam. Thank you for watching Rive Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content. And if you're interested in a deep dive on General Motors and Cruise specifically, I'll put a link in the show notes to an asymmetric investing deep dive. That's my newsletter where I'm looking at asymmetric investments, which actually General Motors happens to be one of those opportunities. And I think this quarter really took a step in that direction. But let's get to the, some of the numbers. This is some of the financial highlights. You can see here $40 billion in revenue, EBIT adjusted, which is oftentimes what General Motors reports, earnings before interest in taxes adjusted for one-time items. So not quite the same as gross margin or operating margin, $3.8 billion, 9.5% of revenue, which is really strong for any automaker. Adjusted auto free cash flow was negative. That's because the company invested about $2.5 billion in capital expenditures in the quarter. I'll cover some of that in just a second. But a 16.4% market share as well. So really pretty good results across the board for General Motors. You can see here, this is what some of the bottom line numbers look like. These aren't quite to scale. So earnings per share adjusted up a little bit. GM actually bought back stock in the quarter. I think that's really an interesting and notable thing, especially given the low price to earnings multiple of about seven right now. And margins were down slightly and so was EBIT adjusted overall. So the trend is a little bit lower, but still a little bit better than investors were expecting, even than management expected. Here's the walk of EBIT adjusted for the quarter. General Motors North America, which is the biggest unit, actually did really well. 3.1 to 3.6 billion in EBIT adjusted for the quarter. General Motors International was flat. GM Financial was down about $500 million. That shouldn't be all that surprising given, given everything that's going on with interest rates right now. So some of the loans that would have been given out in the past maybe aren't as valuable as they used to be. And then we know that a lot of financiers like General Motors are starting to cut back on what they're allowing customers to borrow for vehicles as well. Cruise, there's been more and more investment there. So an increase of $300 million in the loss at Cruise and then some corporate expenses. So add all that together and that's where you get the slight decline in EBIT adjusted, but nothing really all that surprising here. And I think one big takeaway from the quarter is that General Motors North America is actually performing extremely well. Management talked a lot about this on the call. Not only is demand really strong, but pricing is really strong. They've said that will probably wane a little bit in the second half of the year. Might have to be some more incentives. Prices may have to come down a little bit, but overall they expect to have a really good year. I'll get to the guidance figure next. This is the current year guidance, and this is what General Motors increased this quarter. You can see the previous numbers here are here, the small numbers. Previously, ten and a half to twelve and a half billion dollars in EBIT adjusted expected for the quarter. Now they or for the year. Now they expect eleven to thirteen billion. Similar increase for earnings per share adjusted. Increase that range by thirty five cents to six thirty five to seven thirty five. Auto free cash flow increased by another five hundred million dollars to five and a half to seven and a half billion. So overall, the quarter was really good for General Motors. Margins continue to be strong, and this seems to be something that they're expecting to continue throughout the year. So that's a little bit of a adjustment from what we heard from Tesla just last week, that margins are actually down. They were reducing prices, inventories building. There's all kinds of challenges for Tesla, and it doesn't seem like that's making its way over to General Motors. So for investors, I think that's really notable. This is one of the reasons I've been very high on General Motors. Not only are you getting a good value, but it seems like the operating conditions are actually improving. Here are the KPIs that management is guiding to for 2023 to 25. K KPIs are the key performance indicators, about 12% annualized growth to $225 billion in 2025. 
EBIT adjusted gross margins of 10, eight to 10%. So again, the management expects that to be really strong. There's a lot of cost cutting that's going on both on the operating side of things. There was a buyout offer that went out in just the last few months. And so it seems like that's going relatively well as far as taking about a billion dollars in costs out of the business. And then on the electric vehicle side of things, there's expected to be about 400,000 EV units produced between 2022 and the first half of 2024. So about a year and a half range there of actual production. And then by early 2025, they're expecting a million units in North America. So really a lot of investment there in the electric vehicle business. And you might remember during the pandemic, General Motors was really focused on just producing trucks and SUVs, which is really where they're high margin. And so making a big shift there, they expect that EV portfolio to be a low to mid single digit EBIT profit margin in 2025. So a little bit lower than the eight to 10% EBIT adjusted margin that you can see there above for traditional vehicles, but still relatively profitable and probably improving over time. Here are some of the long-term numbers that management highlighted. And there's a couple of things that I want to highlight here. I've talked about the 1 million unit capacity for electric vehicles. I think that's going to be really notable as we transition to more electric vehicles, but GM still stays very invested in trucks and SUVs where it's making most of its money right now. But this is the big thing right here. 50% revenue growth in software and new businesses by 2023 and Cruise is targeting revenue of $50 billion by 2023. This is really the optionality for General Motors. That 80% stake in Cruise has been an investment that companies has been making over the last 10 years. And we're really starting to see it finally come to fruition that these cruise vehicles are out driving around, picking up passengers. They're doing about a thousand trips a day in San Francisco right now. Have expanded to three cities across the U.S. and that expansion is going to expand is going to move further in the second half of this year. Fifty billion dollars is a massive, massive business, and if that can be run cost effectively and generate a decent margin, which I think it can, given the fact that you don't have to pay for drivers. It's an electric vehicle. It's a specifically designed vehicle. Once they move to the cruise origin. I think this could be a really profitable business. And this is ultimately where I see the most value being generated in General Motors is in that cruise business. So the fact that they brought up $50 billion in revenue by 2023 is what they're expecting. That's something that I'm extremely bullish on. The big takeaways from this quarter for General Motors is that we're not seeing that pricing pressure, that demand pressure that Tesla talked about and really experienced in its financial results. We're not seeing that move over to other automakers like General Motors. In fact, the numbers and management's commentary indicate that they have more demand than they can serve right now. The fact that General Motors increased guidance for the full year 2023 is really telling to me. So short term, that profitability play is still intact. And long term, the fact that management put out there that they think crews can generate $50 billion in revenue by 2030, that's only seven years from now. The fact that they think they can scale that business that quickly, I think is going to be really important because if this is going to be a really valuable company a decade from now, not only is GM going to have to transition to producing more electric vehicles, which it's doing, we're also going to have to see a company like Cruise start to disrupt how we think about transportation. And I think that's where ultimately the big value could be created for General Motors. But I think it was a great quarter. I think this was a great quarter, especially given the backdrop. I'm a shareholder in GM, and this is something I'm looking to be adding in the future as well. But what did you think? I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Rev Investing here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you again next time.